All right. Welcome, everybody. Great to see that there's so much people interested in testing. In this session, in this hour, we'll be talking about Unitels. We'll try to explain to you how it became our de facto testing framework inside Smalls. But first things first, my name is Thomas de Rijke. I work as a project manager at Smalls. I'm a big fan of the Agile Manifesto, and I tend to evangelize the importance and all the good things which comes with testing and test automation. If you like, you can follow me on Twitter. Uh, let's see it here. This is my colleague, Jeroen. Hi all, I'm Jeroen. I'm a J2E architect at Smalls. I'm also a contributor to the Unitils open source project, and I embrace KISS, not just the band, but also the principle, keep it simple. I like it very much, and I tend to use it as much as possible. And you can also follow me on Twitter, at Hyper Nations. If you want the latest updates on Unitils, be sure to follow me. And he'll be showing us some code today, so fingers crossed for him. <laughs> All right. Um, a little bit context, so I work uh, for Smalls. Smalls is one of the biggest ICT companies in Belgium. We are active in the social security sector and the healthcare sector. We have offices in Ghent, Charleroi, and Brussels. And to give you an idea, we host the portal of the social security in Belgium, which on an average day has 30 gigs of bandwidth and 4 million hits a day, so it's not a small portal. It's fairly big. Next to that, we have around 300 G2E applications that we have to develop and maintain, which comes around 3 million lines of code that we should be maintaining. Now, a colleague of mine gave a presentation two years ago on how did we become effective at producing uh, applications. And we did some standardization. We did a lot of investment in standardization. For example, we created plugins and Eclipse to boost performance of the developers. Uh, we introduced a build manager, uh, which is Maven. We had some source controlling system. We use Subversion, I think, now. Mm -hmm. um, there is one big continuous integration on which every application resides. And there are some reference architectures. So we're not going to talk about that today. Today we're going to talk about test automation. Um, and we'll try and show you why test automation will boost our developer performance. So before we plunge into some code, let's talk about different types of tests. We'll go over this fairly fast. I think you all know what testing is all about. So first types of tests we could identify are unit tests. Unit tests are really the tests of the individual classes in isolation. And that's an important part in isolation. We want to test just that what one class. We don't want to test its collaborators. Probably we'll mock them out with something, a mock or a stub or something else. When we put everything to those different components, when we put them together, we'll try and see how these different components work, if the subsystem is still working. If we take an example of a car radio, then probably when you, you'll have an antenna, you have some knobs, you'll have a little display. When you put them together, you are creating or you will be testing a subsystem. So then we're, talk, we're talking about integration tests. And finally, you'll do a test when you want to test the full system. Um, and these tests, we tend to call them system tests. Yeah? We're really simulating the end user. Now, how do we need to interpret this uh, image? Well, for unit tests, you need a lot of unit tests. But the advantage is that they're really fast to execute, or they should be. The higher you get to, or the closer you get to uh, user simulation tests, the longer it will take to execute them. Now, ideally, for every project, you should have a lot of unit tests. You should have some integration tests and only a few system tests when you're doing test automation. Now, 
so this is the perfect uh, setup. But if you have to make a choice, always choose for unit testing. There are a lot of reasons why we ch should choose for unit testing. I sum up a few. When your test passes, you're pretty sure that this class is doing what you want. And when it fails, the test will probably show you where your class isn't working. You, you don't need the debugger to find out what went wrong in my component. If you need the debugger, probably you're not really testing a unit test. Probably you're, you're in an integration test. So we already talked about unit test being super fast. Unit tests tend to be easy to read and easy to refactor. Now there are some drawbacks. We have no feedback on the wiring. When we put all the classes together, all the different components together, we don't really know if when they work correctly together. But therefore, we have our integration test. And another drawback is, yeah, we have to write a lot of unit tests. For every class, every method, we should write a unit test. So typically, when you have an application of, let's say, 10,000 lines of code, written code, you will have like 10,000 lines of unit testing code. Now, when I say that, often people say, okay, I'm a bit afraid because that means I have to duplicate the amount of work that I have to do. So it will probably slow me down. Now, this is partially true. Let's take a look at how, um, how an application evolves when, when we have a team which isn't writing any unit tests, all right? So typically what we have identified is a three, f three stages. The first stage you do a setup. Uh, you create your environment. You have your EDE installed. You create some fancy design. And then you start code. You start creating new functionalities. And adding new functionalities to your application will go very fast because your application is rather small. So you're moving along very fast. You're creating functionalities, bug-free functionalities, very fast. Now, as your application grows, maybe there will be some other developers who will join the team, you'll see that it becomes more and more difficult to add new functionalities which are bug-free, which work. So typically, the rhythm of adding new functionalities slows down. I'm a new developer, I want to change something in the code, but I'm not really sure if that other part of the code is still working. So typically, I would redeploy everything, put it on, on my server, and start doing manual testing. Sounds logic? Now let's take a look at a team which does a lot of unit testing which will write for every class unit tests. Now, in the beginning, of course, they'll move along a lot slower. We have not only the framework or the setup for all application, we own also have to do the setup for our testing framework. And the people need to get used to doing tests and writing unit tests. But at a certain time, you'll see that writing new functionalities on your code becomes quite independent from the size of your code. Now, why is that? When I'm new on a project and I want to add some new functionality, the unit tests in that code will show me if some other parts of the code aren't working correctly anymore. So I can be quite confident that everything is still working. So this is an important thing to know. And in an enterprise setting, you're way better off with unit tests. You're always uh, better off with the, with the unit tests. In Smalls, we have a unit testing policy, which states that 75% of every new development should be unit tested. In order to avoid having an explosion of testing frameworks to use. Uh, we looked at a lot of testing frameworks, mocking frameworks, and so on. And we found out that Unitils is 
in our opinion, the best fit for our types of development. So Unitils really lets you focus on testing business logic instead of writing a lot of boilerplate code. It's modular, it's extendable, it's fast, and it's easy to use. And I hope we can demonstrate that today. And on top of that, Unitils can really act as some kind of a glue. If for one reason you really need some other testing framework, well, you can write a module which will use that other framework, so suddenly it becomes available in your test set. And this is really, really interesting, as we'll demonstrate later on. Unitils, for those who don't know it yet, you can hook into JUnit, or you can hook into a test with uh, Unitils. And Unitils, as I explained, it comes with uh, a lot of modules, and it's inside those modules that you find solutions for your common testing problems. The core of Unitils itself is rather fairly small. It's oriented to be very fast and very stable. Uh, the configuration, yes, some words on that. It's uh, just some property files that you can override. Everything is overridable in Unitils. Now, yeah, a unit uh, test skeleton always looks a bit like this. So the only thing you have to do is put the artifact on your class path, annotate your test with uh, the Unitils runner. Here we have a JUnit example, um, and you're good to go. For this presentation, uh, we created a little greeting card application. Uh, what does the application do? Well, it allows, it's a web application, it allows the user to send a greeting card to some friends. And it will store something in a database, it will do some merging to choose a template. It's nearly Christmas, so we want to have some fancy layout. And finally, it sends a mail to as an SMTP server. I think Jeroen will show you now to how we could do some unit testing on this application. Yep, show you the application itself. There in a moment. So we have one simple page. We can use an email address. I have Thomas' girlfriend in here, so I'll send her a card. Choose some kind of template. Use a sense. My internet connection is not 100% stable. I'm tethering over my cell phone. So let's see if it works. The status is kept. I did a demo. Well, I checked my application before we started. We have a sent mail failed and a one OK. I think this one will fail. It will shoot timeout. Oh, it's fine. So your girlfriend has a Thank you. new mail from me. Now into the code. We have a ESF front end. We have uh, a service behind it. It's injected. And the service has some collaborators. It has a DAO, a sender to send the emails, and an engine to merge the template. Those are the three collaborators we work with. And we have a send method on here, which needs a mail, a template, and a content, which were the items we filled in. So if you want to write a test for it, we'll first need some objects. Unitils is modular. So I already had the skeleton here, of course, to make it a bit faster. Unitils is modular, so you just add the modules that you need, not to overload your class path. Since we use injection, I will use the inject module, and I will use the easy mock module. Save it. Recreate our class path. Oh, crap. And after an F5 on my Eclipse, we should be good to go. So we're building with Maven, eh? if it wasn't clear. So our test, empty test now. 
the skeleton is always the same we need to add a run width you can also use the extent run width cap lock off and we have the unitils runner we use JUnit you can also use testng then for the setup we will need the collaborators from our test quick copy paste we're not auto wiring we're using unitils to do the injection so that we not rely on our dependency framework we use but we can test it really in isolation so and it's the card service we're testing now this is our tested object it's a unitils annotation this will create the object for us it will call the default cons constructor or no argument constructor and set the object ready this one will be a mock so I just need to add mock should be on my class part I think you want to test implementation not easy mock yes let's do okay oh, maybe indeed Thomas is right we always test implementation testing a, an interface is something the compiler does for us so we won't be needing that the others are mux2 there yet yeah perfect and for our setup normally in this case I use spring to do the dependency injection you could use another one too and we just say inject into by type there's only one type in our service for each so oh, add inject and one more that's a skeleton if I run the test now it should be green since there's nothing in our test itself so our setup is done um, in this example we chose easy mock there's also a really cool mocking framework for from unitils itself could have used that one too of course um, easy mock looks more like jmock for the people who work with it the unitils mock looks more like um, Mokito. So it's the two different approaches for mocking. Our imports, we import our own class, our easy mock expect. So what happens? We have our three collaborators. We expect what we want on it. Save a return and uh, a send of the email and the template. And on our service, how do I call it? Card service, yes. So, name it properly. Okay. <coughs> so we have the setup. We have our testing code. Um, this part is the easy mock part. Then we use the replay. Since unitils know which mocks are initialized, you can put them all into the replay mode for us. So we don't need to specify them ourselves. We can't forget one. For the ones who know easy mock, you always have to add the verify. Since unitils knows our mocks, since it hooks in on the JUnit lifecycle, he knows when your test ends and it will call the verify for you. It's really cool, especially when you're testing exceptions, because when the exception is thrown, the last line isn't executed. So you can't forget the, the verify. So if I run the test again, it's green. If I run it with my coverage tool, I use Eclema in Eclipse. You can use, of course, whatever you want. And you can see in our test, we tested our happy scenario. Our catching didn't go through yet. We didn't write a test for it. And the cool part is, since it's in isolation and I can prove it, our DAO is never invoked. So no DAO is called, everything is tested in isolation, so we ha now have a test of our service without calling anything else. And it worked, easy setup. 
no boilerplate code, exactly what we wanted. Okay. I look, uh, I see that you had some fun with the Google, um, the Android bot flying in. That's nice. Um, so, a lot of the times we get the question, okay, so that's okay, services, testing services, that sounds logic. But what about our POJOs or, for example, our DTOs or our domain model? Should we start writing tests for all our getters and setters? Well, the answer to that question is uh, no, that won't be very effective. But should we test it? Well, the answer to that question is yes, we should test it. The only thing that's important to know is we should try and look for an intelligent way of testing these uh, objects. And maybe we can show an example of that, that too. Yeah. Um, your Java Bean, I'll open it up, has some rules it has to follow. They're specified by Sun in the, in the old days. So that means everything is private. You need uh, no arguments or a default constructor. You need a getter and a setter for each one, and they should follow the naming convention so that everyone knows what getter is setting what property. And very important, you should not alter your getters and your setters in between. So a trim on the set is not allowed according to the specifications. Now writing a test for each getter and setter would be a bit insane. You can do it by reflection. That's exactly what we did. In this case, we have an abstract test we created and it feeds on a class you enter. Why with the constructor? This way you can easily use the parameterized runner of JUnit and put in every class you want in just one test. So if I run this, it will be green, and to show you that I'm not faking it. A very common made mistake in refactoring is on the setter that you forget it. Your Eclipse, for example, complains about it, but we ignore it. So if I now run our test, it should fail. And it says that the card ID is not correctly filled in. If I put it back in, it should, of course, be okay again. So that's how we set test the getters and setters. In previous projects, we really found mistakes in the anemic domain model and that would be really hard to find when it go onto the servers and you have to start debugging to find that. It can be a big problem. Okay. So, um, this helped us really with achieving the goal at arriving at 75% of test coverage, right? It's a smart solution to some testing question. Now, when you look at unit testing, well, it's once you grasp the concept of mocking and you know some mocking framework, it's fairly easy to do unit testing. The real challenge lies in writing testable code. Um, we could have been talking during this session um, about testable code, um, which is a very interesting topic. So I'll just mention some important things about testable code. Testable code is all about good OO. It's all about using dependency injection, which will allow you to replace other um, components with collaborators. Uh, I think there was a session on dependency injection, but you already all know about dependency injection. That's why you're here, so that's cool. Um, and thinking about uh, foreseeing seams uh, in your code, seams that will allow you to replace your collaborators. And another very important thing is to avoid the use of global state. Global state is really the root cause why your tests become flaky why once they run and second time they doesn't run. For example, time. Time in Java is a global state, so today my test works, tomorrow it doesn't work. So try to avoid using global state as much as you can inside your coding. Now, that's for the uh, unit testing part. Now comes the real challenge. What about integration and system tests? Well, when we talk about integration and system tests, we're talking about a whole different ball game. Integration and system tests tend to get complex. 
probably you'll have some magic abstract superclass which does a lot of stuff. It will set up your application, trying to wire in stubs and other things. And when your tests fail, you're not quite sure if it's your application that fails or maybe it's my testing framework that I designed that's failing. So you start writing tests for your tests, which is, I think we all agree, not a very good practice. Uh, on top of that, those integration tests uh, tend to get flaky, already talked about that, and they're slow, all right? Um, as we try to mimic the user in a system test, well, we're forced to do the same action actions that he does, so we can't really speed that up a lot. And oh yeah, there are a lot of frameworks to learn. Every it's self-respecting framework, uh, let's say JSF, comes with its proper testing framework. This is a testing framework you should use to test us. For JSF, it's JSF unit, Spring has a Spring Runner, um, and probably other frameworks also have their testing framework. So there's a lot to learn. Now, let's focus on these tests. As Smalls being a custom software development firm, we found out that the problems with test automation, we always saw the same problems coming back, all right? Problems with the database. I'm coming on a project, I want to run my tests, but things are failing. Yeah, I'm not actually sure if my database schema is created, if it's up to date, maybe somebody changed something on the creation script. So we're not really sure. Same thing about des test data. I want to write a little test for my DAO, which uses a small part of my database, maybe one table. But too bad, you have a lot of referential constraints, so suddenly for that test you have to fill up your entire database. Not quite interesting. On top of that, you probably will have a slow setup and a slow teardown to create all the system and bring it down after a, after a test. And you'll be having problems when you want to say, okay, I want to run my test, but before I run my test, I should probably install a lot of things and then do some configuration before it will actually run. And the most difficult part is dealing with external services. My application will send an email. It will send an email to some SMTP server. All right, how am I going to test that? I'm not quite certain about that. And we already talked about the border plate code. Now, Unitels gives us a solution for these problems. And as I explained, Unitels is based uh, or works with modules. And each module will give you, or, or each module you create, maybe custom components, will give you solutions for these problems. And as we'll, and on top of that, all the complexity is hidden in these components. Um, I'm not quite sure how much test coverage there <coughs> is in Unitils for the current moment. release, we have 80 plus coverage. And for the next release, for the 4.0, we're going to try to get it over a 90% team even wants to go to 100. So. Yeah. so you can be quite certain that the components which are written are tested. So you know that the test framework is working. You're not reinventing something. Now, back to our greeting card example. So uh, we have our user, and now he wants to do some testing. Um, for that, he sends the, the card, uh, he will look at the screen to say, okay, my status is it's sent and it's okay or it fails. But that's not exactly what we want from a tester. Probably a tester will say, okay, but I really want to check if the email was received on the other side. And probably I also want to do some checking the database. Yeah? I want to check my system. So I'll look into the database to see if everything is inside the database. Let's see how we did this in Unitils to try and write a test with that. Wait a moment. Uh, 
with not knowing anything about Unitils, you'll probably say, okay, we'll do some Selenium. Well, we'll do some automation on my system under test. It will fill in the screen. And after that, we can do the first check. We can check on the screen that the answer we returned is okay. But what about the, the other tests? Well, actually, I don't have, I don't have really have an idea. Now, Unitils, as explained, gives you modules. We have a module which is called the WebDriver module, which, hook, which hooks into Selenium. It will allow you to use Selenium through Unitils. So we're not re-implementing Selenium. That's not the case. Here, Unitils is the glue. Now, for everything that has to do with the database, there is a database module. So at each test, my database gets reinitialized, and we can do some database verifications. After the mail is sent, I want to verify that the content of the mail is actually in the database. Now, we don't want to write SQLs to verify the database, so we could use a DBUnit module. DBUnit it allows you to have a XML representation of data and to put it in the database or to do some verifications in the database. And finally, for example, for sending mail, there is uh, some mail module. And this mail module is a quite a, a robust one. What will do for you? This, again, it will help us check that the mail is actually sent. Here, the mail module, it will actually, when your test starts, it will create or it will launch a fake SMTP server on a specified port. And so inside your test, you can ask this fake mail server and saying, okay, uh, were there any mail sent to whom were they sent, with which, which attachments, what was the body? So these modules will allow us to create our test, and you'll see that, it's, that there is not a lot of wiring, not a lot of magic in the test. It's really hidden inside the modules. So, let's see some code. Let's see some code. <coughs> All right. In the previous example, we just put it Unitils on the class part. We launched it. Everything worked. Most of the Unitils modules will work like that, but some need some extra configuration, and that's found in the Unitils properties. For example, mock, easy mock, inject, and spring module will work without any configuration. But for setting up your database, we have to tell Unitils where our database can be found, what database we are using, and where you can find the scripts to put it online. Same for the driver. We need it hooks into Selenium, so we need to tell it where to find at least our application. So the, the previous, the first modules in the list are default unitils. These are the ones we created, a mail module and a driver module. So you have to tell unitils we have to use these modules. You specify the fully qualified name so we can initialize it. It implements an interface, of course, so it knows what to do with it. Our database that we're using is an HSQL DB, and our scripts can be found in the DDL folder in our resources. We have only one table and a sequence. When I would add a 002 in this directory, it will incrementally create, incrementally create the new tables that are in the new script. So no hassle in updating all schemas of all the developers yourself. Unitils will just see, ah, your database isn't up to date. I'll add a script. When I'll change the first one, he will drop everything and recreate it in the correct order. So we don't need to watch the database anymore. It's always up to date when running a test. There's also some XSDs that get generated for the DB unit. People who know it, DB unit is an XML re representation of data that you put in your database. Uh, the database module of Unitils generates the XSDs so you have code completion in your EDA. We're using Firefox today. I run it on a local server on my local host. And this is the port for the mail module that we're using so it can start my SMTP server. Then, for the module, as said, we want to lower the, the code base 
as much as possible. We don't want boilerplate code. So we have our WebDriver module. As you can see, it's uh, from Selenium, Selenium 2A using WebDriver. Um, there's no use in reinventing the wheel, so we just make unit tails work together with all big testing frameworks for us. This is an MT SMTP server. Behind the interface, there's the Wiser implementation, for the people know it. It's an open source project. Then we have our URL. It's needed for Selenium 2. And we have a page for Selenium. We use, we use a page factory design. What does that mean? We have a class, and it defines every element that you have in that page. One page is one class. As you can see, we have email content, a button, and a table, and that comes back in an email content template, the button, and the table. So they're just easily mapped one-on-one. -on -one. When you, in ESF, don't forget to specify your IDs, makes it a lot easier. You can also use XPath and so on. The ID is fairly easy. All right, now let's put it to the test. Now it will check my database if it's up to date. It will boot my Firefox, hopefully in a second. Then after the Firefox is booted, he will run the complete test, runs verification on the emails that's being sent on the database and on the page itself. And it will even make sure you shut down the Firefox even if something fails in your test. So here's the test. You can see we reuse the application. There's only one line now. Use the send. It's OK. And we're good to go. Since we're not connecting to the internet anymore to send, but locally on the SMTP server that my test boots, it will always be OK to send the mail. No problems with connections. How does the verification work? In this case, I used an SQL assert. You can also use the at expected data set. And we count that we now have two in, two lines in our database. We'd say, well, it's a bit weird. It's a very easy check. Yes, it is, and that's the point. We have a data set. We know there's only one thing in the database. We have a good unit test or a low level integration test for our database. So we know if the object is created correct, then it's filled in. Our service test makes sure that our object is correctly created. So if we wire everything together, we don't need to specify every assert into the detail because we know all the components work. So a quick checkup, which is way faster, makes it possible that we know our application is running without any problems. We have also on the mail server that one line is received and we have on our page an assertion that this line, the email, the content, and the OK is put in. That's about it for the example. OK. Back to you. I think we all agree that uh, it's quite smooth, not a lot of code, and yeah. the application is doing a lot of things, the testing is doing a lot of things. Yeah. So that's actually what we want. We want to keep our tests readable. When they fail, that we know, okay, probably it's on that line, and we're not uh, looking at uh, tons of code just to wire up our application yeah. together. Our tests really focus on testing our business. So no more, no less. It's like ri writing real code. You want to focus on writing your business code, not everything around it. That's what we use frameworks. So our test framework should do the complete same thing. Let us focus on what we need to test. All right, so we all agree that integration and system testing becomes a lot more interesting with the help of Unitils. The problems we had with those tests, uh, let's say the, the complexity, the, the super abstract magic class, or uh, writing tests for your test is finally over. Uh, the complexity is inside the modules. Your test becoming flaky, well, this probably will be a lot less flaky than, than before because the modules we use are really tested and they can be reused in other projects. The one thing we can't solve is that those tests stay slow. So that's something we need to accept. 
Now, if we take this example and we try to see what we did inside Smalls, we took the reference architecture. Um, we talked with a lot of people to see, okay, what are now the most commonly used things in applications we develop at Smalls. So typically we have uh, some GSF front-end, maybe some web services or an EGB back-end. Uh, maybe your application will use some queues or you have a FAT application, let's say Swing. Um, the application could send mails, it do, can do some FTP calls, um, and we have some uh, batch system which uses <coughs> Spring Batch. So what we did, and probably uh, well, you'll need a database. So what we saw is that for all these testing problems, we could fairly easily start writing uh, Unitels modules. And so, then there are a lot. Okay. So finally, we, we created a framework or a set of, it's not really a framework, we, we created a set of modules which can be used by every development team inside Smalls and which will ease in the creation of their tests and test creations. So if there is one thing I, I'd like you guys to remember is really, okay, if you have some testing issues, think about creating or using some modules of Unitels. Your colleagues will be very pleased if you have that. Okay, we have some, a lot of time left for some Q&A. Some questions? There is a mic over there. Could you, uh, or otherwise I'll repeat the question. Um, in Smalls, we use Maven to build, and in Unitils, you can override. You have the property system, so there's a default, a normal, and a local, and you can easily override the local one using Maven. So what we do is we add the config specific for the server. We had, for example, the problem with the mail server. Uh, we use a Unix machine, so all ports underneath 2000 and are locked by default. So in that case, we just reuse another port higher and put that in the config. Because e Unitils is easy to use and the configuration, everything is open, you can also use Unitils itself to inject it, for example, in your Spring config for your test. If you have a separate test config, you can use Unitils to get out your port number that is used by the module itself. So they're always in sync by in that case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in okay. our case, we have a lot of slaves that are sometimes project specifics. We have locks, so you ask to create a lock on a, on a certain port, and you can say to Jenkins, um, when I have the lock, no, um, no other process can start as long as I have it. Or you could invent a system that's saying, okay, I want to check the port, and if it's occupied, well, I'll choose a random other port inside some range. Other yes. questions? I didn't see you start the uh, web application. How do you start it? If it's a large application which does lots of things with databases in a front, uh, how do you start it? Because it was already running your web application right now? Yeah. Um, we most of the times use uh, Jenkins to deploy our application. Uh, we use WebLogic, so it's a heavy weight application server. So it's running, we use Maven or Jenkins to deploy it for us and then start running. So we integrate that part in our, um, in our build structure. We want to keep our tests as lightweight as possible and if we start deploying in our test itself, then it starts to get hard. Um, when switching the profiles in Maven, most developers have uh, a local one running, so it then tests your local deployed well, we run it in Eclipse then. Eclipse deploys automatically our latest version. You run the test and it runs on your local host. So we don't integrate the deployment ourselves okay. in the test. In our opinion, it's not the responsibility of the test to do the deployment. This should be your building mechanism. So if it's defined in Maven, okay, use Maven to do this. 
to do the deploy and then run your tests. Yes. What's the date time module about? Yeah, okay, so I'm going to repeat the question. So okay. what's the date time module about? Uh, the date time model exactly allows you to hook into Yoda. Uh, when you create an application and you have a lot of things going on with time, probably you use Yoda time, so it allows you to hook into it, so that during your test you can set your, uh, your time easily. You can yeah. fix your time at the beginning of your test and it automatically you releases it again at the end. Can you take the mic? Yes. Are there any modules for uh, REST or uh, NoSQL testing? No. For not the moment, I'm, I'm not uh, aware of any modules. But um, if you like to create one, there's uh, information on the Unitil site how to create a module. It's fairly easy. It's implementing two interfaces. So, um, yeah, please do it. Let us know, and then we'll even help you out if we can. Oh. Yes. Uh, imagine that uh, on your uh, web application you would have export button. Uh, have you got a solution to check whether this uh, exporting reports works? Uh, exporting, let's say, as generating some file or something? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, we have one in Smalls we developed. Um, for the moment, it only runs on Windows machines, so we need a Windows slave on our Jenkins to check that. It starts up an executor that hooks in into the Explorer, downloads the file, and then we check the file um, in the test again using the file module or the I.O. module. So it's possible, but it's a, it's a hard setup for that one. Maybe this part of... Uh Excuse me, if, is there any way to control what? The order of, test of test execution. Well, actually, that's a very interesting question because we are convinced that um, your order or your test shouldn't um, impact each other. When you say, okay, my first test does something, my second test will use the result of the first test, that isn't really a good practice. Your test should always run or be able to run in isolation. You say, or not, not really in isolation, but you say, I want to pick out one test and when it runs, it should always pass. I shouldn't have to force another test to run in front of that. You should change your setup so that you can run your test. Now, if you really would want that, TestNG supports it, so you can just hook in Unitils on TestNG and then you have the entire power of TestNG to make the dependencies on the test. So, uh, yeah, it's possible, not with JUnit, but TestNG does it for us, so and you can use that one. Yes, could you do please? Do you also support mocking up web services? And how do you configure the, the endpoint? Right, mocking of web services. So, um, what we did create, we didn't create a mock because probably you want to change something in your application. What we did create was creating a, a, a module, a web service module, which allows you to use um, SOAP UI. So what does it model do? Um, you can encode your tests with SOAP UI, but you can reuse um, the, the code inside your Java. So you can attack directly the, the web service. I don't know if that's a, an answer to your question. Again, since we can easily override the Unitils config in, um, for different environments, you can put in a variable you specify yourself in there, and you can ask Unitils, get me the, the value for this key. And then when switching with your Maven profiles, you can attack another endpoint. Yeah, that's something probably you want to do inside your Maven. You'll, you'll have a profile that's there for testing. So you'll probably say, okay, now I want to test my application using some fake um, web service or some stuff that I create. So you should inside your build change something. You'd say, okay, I want to use 
another endpoint that's there for testing. <coughs> it's a bit like uh, the mail module we saw, all right? <laughs> so we changed uh, the, the configuration inside our application and say, okay, we do now a build for testing and we will pinpoint to the, um, the, the fake SMTP server and we can ask feedback from that server. We could do, you could think about doing the same thing about webs for web servers. It will be Yeah. Oh, that's quite interesting. Yeah. So that's really the idea. We we don't want to invent new solutions. The idea of Unitils is really to to be the glue, to be able to use everything together. I would be able to use your uh, implementation for web services and have the database model to populate some database and stuff like that. So you can put everything together, and your test is small, readable, and maintainable. Yes. Uh, I've, yeah. uh, uh, I've integrated uh, Unitils uh, in an existing project one Excellent. month ago. Yeah. Uh, I, I already used it in some other projects, but uh, the problem now was that the project already used DBUnit, and, uh, but your Unitils uh, is using DBUnit from 2008. Yeah. So there I got a lot of conflict. So my question is, when are you uh, planning to have a new release? Maybe you should explain why. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, the DB unit itself is very flaky. It tends to break a lot of code when you um, merge it up, especially when you hook heavily into it, like Unitils does. So it's hard to maintain. Now, um, we're working on the 4.0. We're not sure about the, re the release yet. We're um, finding new angles to, to do stuff. We really want to test it properly. We want to make it a good release. Um, Tim, our, the lead architect, just had a a new baby, so, well, he's a bit, he's, he's just started again to working on it, so our release has got a bit postponed. We don't know the release date yet, but to counter that, uh, Tim implemented a new data set module that uses uh, the same uh, syntax of DB unit, so it's backwards compatible to DB unit, but it's way faster, has uh, a lot more tags you can use, has better support for different schemas using them together. So we're working on that one because the unit was not reliable enough. Um, team implemented itself, and it's, it works pretty fine. It's still a snapshot version. It's beta. No, it's not even beta. It's, it's alpha. I already tested it out. It works fine. It's fast, but it's not yet released. So in the next release, there will be a new database. So to, to give you a date, probably somewhere in, let's say, March, something like that. We hope so, yeah. yeah. Okay, thanks. Problem. Yes. No, as for attacking of the services, um, we found out in Smalls are. Maybe, maybe you should repeat the question. Ah, I'll repeat the question first. Um, we do not. The question was if we mock out web services. No, we do not. But we have a module to attack the web services. So. Um, when you have a SOAP UI project, it's hard to put it into your Maven structure. There's a Maven plugin, but then we don't have the database support. Um, you can't switch around the endpoints very easily. So we developed a module so you can switch out the endpoints without issues. It's just a setting in the Unitils properties. And it will read the SOAP UI file. It will effectively use the code of SOAP UI itself, and it will attack the web service. So. so yeah. yeah, that's for replaying the test. Yeah, we, know we haven't had time to look into that yet. We already use it standalone, but not yet integrated. It could be a good uh, extra module for next year. Yeah, exactly. Right, yes. Could you, could you speak up a bit? Um, does it support certificates? Well, <coughs> we haven't encountered really... Yes, uh, partially, but not all different kinds of uh, security is supported by Selenium. But it supports normal uh, SAML authentication. It's possible to use SOAP UI. And since we just reuse the code of SOAP UI to call it, we don't invent it ourselves. We just hook into SOAP UI, 
we, uh, we are able to use the same functionalities as they do. Okay. We have one minute left. One more question. Can't see. Uh, no? All right. Perfect timing. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. I uh, hope you enjoyed this session and uh, hope you all be starting to using Unitils inside your projects to do some testing. Thank you. Thank, thank you very, very much. much.